Hey everybody, my name is Jim Farmer. I'm the festival director of Out on Film. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, Give or Take is one of my favorites from this year's festival. And I'm very happy that we have the team from Give or Take with us tonight. So I will let every, the three of you go around the room and introduce yourselves. Hello, hello, uh, I'm Paul Riccio, uh, the co-writer and director of Give or Take. Um, I'm Jamie Efros, the other co-writer, and I play Martin. Okay. I'm Louis Kinchelmi, and uh, I play Terrence. Great. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, well, first of all, I mean, how did this film come up for all of you? Um, about four years ago, I had this kernel of an idea, a very small kernel of an idea, and uh, Jamie's someone I've worked with before, and a um, very good friend, and um, someone who's ri- ri- reliable, who will show up. So, um, and I, uh, I had this idea about this guy from New York City and uh, going up to the Cape, and I, it was a very, very nebulous idea. And uh, I said, Jamie, what do you think? He goes, that sounds great. And then uh, I said, what about, what about uh, us writing it together? And that's how it all started, and, uh, and here we are. So you, uh, you, you two had worked together on other projects before? Yeah. Um, we had done a, a pretty successful satirical short called Timmy Brothers Watermakers, which was a send up on the whole artisanal um, food uh, scene. It was, about a, it was about two brothers who made, uh, who made bespoke water in Bushwick, Brooklyn, you know, bringing the water, on, uh, bringing the water over you know, from other continents via Buro, their team of Buros back to Bushwick. They lost a lot of the water because there were a lot of spillage the, you know, on the way. But, uh, so that's where Jamie and I and I did another short that was at Tribeca a few years back called Space Cadet, uh, starring Richard Edson and, and Jessica Hecht. And as I said, it, it, Jamie's one of those uh, people that uh, you meet him and you're like, huh, I want to work with that guy. And uh, he's smart and he has the same sensibility. And um, he was the first call I made. Nice, nice. Um, was, there, was there any inspiration for the film or, or is any of this autobiographical? Um, there are elements that are autobiographical. Uh, you know, the kid in a garbage can, uh, that was me as a child. Okay. Um, but no, I think it's kind of, we, we touched on sort of universal stories here and, and uh, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of Jamie and I in it, but I wouldn't say uh, any elements of the story are, are, are strictly autobiographical. Okay. I'm curious about the, the process of you two writing together. How did that go? How did you, how did you co-write this? Well, neither of us had really co-written uh, something together and it was kind of an amazing learning process because we, uh, we, we spent a lot of time in, in the room together. We, uh, we, would, um, we would sort of go back and forth with lines, write that way, sometimes then disappear for a little while, come back with the scene, polish that up, and, and then, you know, it, it, was a, it, was, it was a long process. It was, uh, good Lord, how did we, how, how long did we actually write this thing for? Three about years? About three years. Yeah, three, yeah. three years of writing. Um, but, um, you know, it went through a lot, of, a lot of permutations in terms of like just us honing really what we were trying to say with these characters and where they were coming from. And um, it was great because, you know, Paul and I have, have similar sensibilities, like he said, so, mm-hmm. so, so very nicely. Um, we have similar sensibilities and similar sense of humor, but we have different writing styles. And I think to, 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 met, to mesh those together um, ended up being, being really great because it, it, it just pulled, pulled from both of our strengths and, and allowed us to kind of like take the piss out of each other a little bit where, where we needed to. Okay. So you filmed this last fall, last winter, last fall, is correct? Uh, we shot it in the spring of 2019. Okay. And uh, Jim, I'm sure you've been to Cape Cod. Maybe uh, uh, you've been up there in the beautiful summer months. Oh, yeah. I think you understand that Cape Cod in April and May is a little bit different than Cape Cod in July and August. Oh, definitely, yes. yes. So we, were, uh, we, had, we had nice rain, uh, cold, wind. Well, Lewis will tell you, I mean, I had to sit in a, well, these two, I had to sit in a hole for about uh, four <laughs> hours uh, against, on a windy beach. So. Yeah. <laughs> And they pretended they weren't cold. <laughs> what, what I, one of the things I really like about this film is that it, it's really so much about relationships, you know, old relationships, you know, forging new relationships. Can you talk a little bit about 
the relationship between Ted and Martin and how that starts and how that sort of evolves over the course of the film? Yeah. You yeah go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you go. All uh, right. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, I think that one of the things that I uh, I was really interested in writing about was um, people um, people not being honest uh, with themselves, people not being emotionally honest about what is who they are and what's most important to yeah. them. And Martin's character is really sort of. Uh, is emblematic of that is a person who thinks he's got things figured out but he he doesn't really have much emotional honesty at all and when i was thinking about um a like a, a foil to to put that character against of someone who really has that honesty uh, i i kept coming back to people that i know in my life who who came out later in life and what an absolute full sense of themselves they had like more than anyone I knew they were the most themselves and they were the most they were the most honest and fully formed people that I knew and so uh, Paul and I started playing with the idea of 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 this of this relationship that maybe that that, that maybe this was the the lover of my father who passed away and was the true love of his life and was something that that Martin couldn't understand um, um, but for, for multiple reasons, uh, mostly that he couldn't understand because he, he wasn't being honest about his life and about himself in the same way that his father had figured out to be and, and that Ted, Ted was able to be. Um, and the, so the, the push and pull of that relationship kind of unfolds over the course of, of, of the film of, um, the slow process of, uh, coming to grips with the way that, um, that these two men see uh, this man that they loved in extremely different ways. And the fact that they, it, he could be both people at the same time, as long as they were honest about, um, about their relationship to him and, and what was important. Okay. During the time all this is going on, Martin becomes friends with Terrence. So Ter I mean, Lewis, can you talk a little bit about their relationship over the course of the film and how that really shapes everybody? Well, I can say, um, yeah, for, well, you know, Terrence uh, is, is uh, you know, a, a friend of um, uh, Martin's father and is a friend of Ted's already. And um, he knows him because they work together sometimes and he used to do the pool for, for, for Martin's dad. So he just, so the, the idea that this is um, his friend's son who's come up, his, his friend is dead. That's just that the, for Terrence, that means this is, this is a, a new family member. And there's, I think the initial um, um, uh, interaction between them is just about that, you know, just about uh, um, here's somebody who kind of, I already know. And, and in a way, just to go off of what um, of what Jamie was just saying, um, that's something that actually kind of surprise seems to surprise Martin that somebody could uh, not have um, you know a bunch of barriers or protocol or yeah. sort of uh, you know emotional or social hoops to jump through in a way before they kind of just accept somebody in front of them, and that kind of in, in a way that in a way, even just from that scene kind of defined, at least, you know, defined Terrence for me in terms of re the relationships. I think that maybe for Terrence, that's how kind of he, he, he leads his life that way in terms of his relationships that he kind of takes what's right in front of him. Um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, uh, he doesn't sort of do a bunch of um, detours and stuff. He just sees what's right there or tries yeah. to. Sure. Yeah. The, the, the gay, the central gay relationship in the film. Obviously, we only meet Ted, but it still feels like such a palpable relationship, even though we only get to see Ted. But can you can you talk about you know Paul and Jamie, just the idea of sort of fleshing out their relationship? So when you come home again, you get a sense of this life that they had together that you really had no idea about. Yeah, we and we tried. You know, it's a very that was kind of tricky because um, 
you know, you're telling, you're telling, you're trying to inform the audience about someone who you really never see on the screen, you never hear him speak for himself, um, uh, which was, which was, a, which is a bit tricky. Um, but it was also gave us some freedom because, um, uh, you know, we had talked about uh, a person, you know, when, when someone's gone, you hear all the stories about them and, um, you know, they're not, they're not there to defend themselves, nor are they there to sort of, uh, you know, straighten up, you know, uh, keep the record straight. So, um, you know, you're hearing about uh, the same man from Martin's point of view uh, in his recollection and Ted's point of view and Terrence's point of view and Emma's point of view. And if you can see the struggle with Martin, um, where he's just like, who are, the, who are you talking about? Who are you, you know? Um, chasing around the yard with margaritas in, in, a, in super soakers, who running around, you know, after the Red Sox won the World Series. So I thought that was a lot of fun, um, you know, just sort of uh, painting a picture of, of this man and really that contrast between the sort of, you know, the, 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 the man who was able to live uh, an openly gay life and as Jamie was saying, you know, honestly, and just his fullest life, um, compared to not an unhappy life before, but just a different life. And, uh, um, you know, constantly sort of at war with himself. Um, and I thought, uh, and I hope that comes across in, in the film. I thought, I, I thought, you know, um, Ted and Martin did a great job of just, you know, helping the audience, uh, conveying to the audience who this person was. And, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, Jamie, do you have anything you want to add there? I would say that like uh, another element of that that made made that character really palpable, even though he never wasn't wasn't in the film, is the is the production design. Um, and um, Cheyenne Ford, our our production designer, really just went all out with as little resources as you could possibly have yeah. in order to create a sense of home, a sense of, of, of real, a lived in space with really, really intentional choices that, that gave you a sense of, uh, of, of the, of, of a, not just the, the loving relationship, but the person who had been there and that there was a real sense of, uh, of, of, of presence to Kenneth. Um, in the house, because that was really what we were trying to achieve was like th the fact that the house itself was our character for for Kenneth. That's what th that's what we had to show. Um, other than the pictures that you have, which are, by the way, of my dad, actually, that's, that's really my dad. Um, and, um, and then also just, you know, Norbert's performance of he brought so much personal personal depth um, to 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 that to that relationship and um, we just we knew that we knew that he would be able to bite that off but we we were also really pretty blown away by by him um, just showing up and and sh and showing us who Kenneth really was yeah well well speaking of the ensemble. I mean, you three know this, but I don't think anyone else who's watching this knows this, but uh, earlier today, we, we our, our jurors um, let me know about their first award this year, and Give or Take is a co-winner of our jury award for Best Ensemble, so kudos to the ensemble of this That's film. That's awesome. So anyway, can you That's all, great. I mean, I want to ask all three of you about, you know, making sure that, that everybody had three dimensions and, and just making sure that everybody just felt real and lived in. Can you all sort of talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it starts with the writing, you know, it's, 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 uh, it starts with the writing, but it's, uh, it's such a journey. You write it and then you, 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 you find the best actors uh, you can to work with. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we were uh, blessed with, uh, you know, overwhelmed, we were overwhelmed by the response we got to the script yeah. and, uh, um, you know, I mean, no one was making any money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This was not a, this was a no frills production, man. Um, and every, so the, 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 it was overwhelming. Um, so you start with that script and then you put it in the very capable hands of very fine actors, um, who, you know, uh, I likened it to, uh, there's an old, uh, there's an old story about the old Yankees and someone asked Casey Stengel, this is back in the sixties or the fifties, Casey, what do you say to Mickey Mantle? Uh, you know, uh, before he, uh, you know, to, to get him going or to, before he uh, goes on the field, he goes, 
you're up. And that's all he said, because he was that. And that's basically what I said to these actors. What the hell am I going to say to Lewis, who's, who's been with that script, who knows that script? Um, same with Jamie and Norbert. I mean, it was it was very little direction that had that had to go on. Nor did we have the nor did we have the luxury of time to to sort of you know have uh, five, ten, whatever takes. Um, so that's where it started, and uh, you know, um, uh, and then it comes to life with with like with people like Lewis and and, and Jamie. And I'll just I gotta add that um, Paul really loves actors. I mean, Paul, Paul loves working with actors and he understands the actors. And he, uh, he when we were writing this, it was, it was clear from the start that this was gonna be, you know, this was gonna be a character driven piece. Yeah. And which is why when, when Paul came to me, it's like, I got this, this uh, bit of I, an idea. I would love to write it with you and I want you to be, be with it. I was just like, twist my arm, man. That sounds like the best thing ever to be able to write a, a, a piece that is, um, that, that, uh, that I know is going to be a story about characters and about real people and about uh, people with, uh, with big hearts. And, um, and so I, th I, th I think it's a, it is a real testament to, um, to, to the way that, 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 uh, that Paul uh, jumped this thing off. Lewis? And I, I would add, uh, you know, just to, I guess this is a way jumping off uh, what Paul was saying, but with the script, the script, you know, you, uh, actor reads a lot of stuff. Sometimes you, you know, feel like you can kind of muscle it into something or you're not sure how it'll work, but you think something's there. In this case, you know, and I think this is, this is true of, um, a lot of people that read this script, you read it and it just, there's a kind of clarity in the scene. There was, there was, it's active, it's fun. The dialogue is alive, the characters, even, even when they're sort of just sketched out in the scene, huh. it was to me, just the, you know, the first time going through it, I felt I can see how this has, you know, big life in it. I can see how there's a, um, you know, just opportunity for play that's one of the you know the biggest things when you see a uh you know sometimes you get a script it's like well this is ex i just have to do this one thing there's one way to do it that's how i'll do it that's what the script wants me to do there's kind of no really way around it in this case you could just feel that there was life and and possibility in it and um in terms of the three-dimensionality stuff that you said i mean uh there are plenty of people i know you know i had i had especially with, well, with this script, I could draw from people that I knew, experiences that I'd had, and um, uh, there was room for it in the script to, you know, without changing any lines, because honestly, there was this, I mean, I don't know about other people, but Terrence, I think that was just all written. I don't think there was very much, you know, addition or subtraction. It's all there, but there was still room to bring, um, you know, air into it, to bring, you know, uh, different qualities of, uh, you know, of, of, of reality and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, really, um, that comes from the script. Sure. Paul, we, we, we've all talked about the, the leading men of the film. Can you talk about the great actresses that are in this as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, uh, Joanne Tucker played, uh, plays Emma. And um, boy, oh boy, um, I mean, I don't know, this is my first feature, so I, I'm not sure if I just lucked out or if this is how it usually works, but uh, uh, I work with a, a good friend of mine who I've known for a long time, uh, my uh, casting director, Ann Goulder. We'd never worked on a feature before, so I was like, yes, we can finally work together. And um, Ann's terrific and knows everybody. And uh, I don't know, I mean, Lewis comes in, he reads it once, I'm like, okay, that done, see you in a few months. Uh, Joanne comes in. I was like, okay, done. See, if, I mean, she just, Joanne just knocked it out of the park. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, she completely got it. She completely got it, uh, this character of Emma. Um, you know, uh, she was just a pleasure to work with. Um, we also had The Great, which was a, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a comedy nerd. Um, we had the great Sherry O'Terry with us. Uh, who, right? I, come on now. It was like, 
it was like something where it's like, I think I dreamt about it before. Like, oh, I'd love to work with her one day, you know? And uh, next thing you know, she's in, she's on set with us. And she actually auditioned. It's not like, you know, it's not like we just offered her the role. Um, she actually sent in a tape. Um, where she at first she asked if she could. And I said, I think so. I think you can. I want to send that in. And, um, not, only, not only did she audition, she didn't just audition. She had, she auditioned in the actual scene. She showed up at her own front door with a casserole. With a casserole. And like did the whole scene, like came into the house and someone was following. I mean, like it, it was insane. We watched this and we were just like, our faces were melting. We were like, it was crazy. Oh, this is real. And she's just the best. She's like, just, you know, Jamie's mentioned before, but it, it's like, a, it was like a, a, a master class in comedic timing and just, you know, I mean, just the best. Um, uh, and who else? So Annapur, uh, Annapurna uh, uh, Sriram uh, plays uh, Lauren. And again, uh, she's sort of, uh, she's sort of on the, uh, on the, you know, coming on her career there. Uh, I, I think she's worked with Lewis or not worked with Lewis, but I think they worked on yeah, yeah. millions as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, um, she comes in and she's just funny as heck. And there's a, uh, a light and a, you know, she, she, she knows the role and you're like, okay, I'm done. I just, uh, as I said, I, maybe it was just first time luck, but it, it, it seemed uh, that everything just fell into place. It was, it was just a nice experience. I was really intrigued um, when Martin comes home and he, and he finds this relationship that he never really knew the depth of. I guess the backdrop, he, he's in this relationship himself that sort of seems like it's slowly deteriorating. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that, um, I think that Martin's, Martin's relationship was, was mostly about appearances. It was mostly about, um, uh, and if you, he, there's a line at, at some point about just sort of like checking each other's boxes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I th the, way that, the way that I sort of interpreted that and the way, the way that we, we, we wrote it was, you know, the way that Martin sort of learned about, um, about relationships was, from his parents' relationship, which was in, in essence, his father checking some boxes about what, he, what his life was supposed to look like in a world where he did not, he, he knew he would not be accepted. Um, and because if, you, if, 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 you're, if you're modeling yourself on someone who is not living their own full life, honestly, uh, you're probably pr going to be in good stead to not be living an honest, uh, emotionally honest life yourself. So that was kind of, that was the, uh, that was the impetus of, of, for, for that relationship was to, was to show that like, uh, you know, and this is a, and I think it's a, it's a, th it's a thing about um, just being in the world today and uh, consistently comparing ourselves off of other people's worlds and other people's relationships and other people's standards, that this was a relationship that was really based on that. It was based more on optics and appearance than anything else than like, and, and it's something that um, he sort of has to figure out through the course of, of the piece. Um, and, but then once he does figure out that it's not just him, uh, it's her too, that she's been pretending. And once they are able to be honest with themselves and with each other, it's like, oh, well, once we relieve the pressure of that and we can be ourselves, I don't know, maybe, maybe this isn't completely gone. Maybe it's not deteriorated. And we, we wanted to... We didn't, we didn't want to just sort of send Lauren on her way really at the end. We wanted to make it clear that like uh, that coming to that level of honesty can, can, can free things up so that people can, uh, can, can, can be better in, in the relationships. They don't have to necessarily run away. So it's open-ended there at the end. Okay. Paul, can you talk a little bit about this being your first feature and what challenges, you know, were there for you? Yeah, I mean, um, it was, uh, I mean, it, it, we had all the, the challenges that you, you might expect, uh, not enough money, not enough time, uh, weather, you know, the, the nice thing is the one thing we did have going for us 
was a team of people both in front of the camera and behind who were all rowing the same direction and whose only interest uh, and whose only motivation was to make a good movie. And uh, when you have that sort of support um, and you realize that you've got a ton of people rooting you on and um, you know, everyone sort of you know, uh, on your side and that esprit de corps, uh, you know, while you're going through the, going through it, it's madness, but it's also exhilarating. It's exhilarating. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, but you can't wait around forever. You know what I'm saying? It's never, it's like having, it's like having a family. You just, there's never a good time to have a child. You know, enough money, you have a small apartment. <laughs> you have a baby and you figure it out and you get on with your life and that's how it works. Same thing with the film. You can't wait around for everything, all the pieces to fall into place. You're not gonna have enough time, you're not gonna have enough money. Just do it, you gotta do it. And you know, it might not be the most uh, pragmatic uh, or sensible way of looking at it, but it, otherwise, uh, you know, you can sit around and, uh, years from now and going, what, uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know? Exactly. Um, this film is still fairly, fairly, you know, early in its festival run. Um, can you talk a little bit about where the film is going from here and, and a, fo a follow-up? What, what's next for all three of you? Well, we're, as you said, we just started the, our festival run and it's been thrilling. Um, we're obviously all disappointed not to be able to get together and see each other and hang out and, uh, and you know, um, get into, have an audience and all of that. And see all of these other films too. Yeah, it's it's that's the disappointing thing. Um, so yeah, so uh, we've got a, a whole bunch of festivals lined up, and then um, you know we're talking to distributors now. Um, but that's that's the sort of you know that'll that'll be happening in the months to come. Uh, I've got our executive producers are are handling that. They they they're smart enough to uh, to know that they shouldn't get me get me involved in the business side of things. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm writing, uh, I've, uh, I've got another uh, film uh, or another script called uh, uh, St. Augustine uh, about a uh, mom and, and her son who go down to, uh, to find the fountain of youth down in, uh, in St. Augustine, Florida. Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I think Lewis certainly, uh, he's got a lot on his plate and I know Jamie's got, he's got stuff going as, on as well. Well, I, I, uh, <laughs> I have a lot sort of on the back burner while, while everybody's waiting for things to uh, get started again. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, we, I'm, I'm on, the, I'm on uh, Billions on Showtime um, and uh, that we, we sort of got cut off mid-season because of the pandemic this year. Um, and so far, we don't have a firm date for starting up, but hopefully new year ish um that's it's kind of been changing so i'll be back on that sometime soon okay. and uh and then just a couple you know a couple films one that's one that's in the can and i don't know when it's going to come out but it's a a biopic about uh jim and tammy faye baker and the the, the uh the scandal of their <laughs> who do you, Lewis, who do you who do you play in that oh i'm kind of an amalgamation of um uh god what's the guy's name he he was sort of jim's right hand man partner in crime <laughs> and oh, really? uh, a bit of a yeah a, a pretty uh i don't know a little bit of a skis ball kind of guy i mean <laughs> can you why believe do they always it? make you such a, a scumbag lewis i don't understand uh, yeah yeah is this the film with jessica chastain and andrew garfield yeah yeah okay. Yeah, it's called the, uh, the Eyes of Tammy Faye. Is that still scheduled to come out this year? Or is it I have no idea. I think actually, I, I don't remember even when it was originally slated to come out. I shot mostly in October, November okay. of, this, of, of, of 2019. And uh, I think it was supposed to be a summer movie this year. I, I, don't, I don't know the timing on it. I mean, everything has been crazy thrown thrown create you know and uh yeah and then other stuff that's just you know who knows what will actually materialize or not <laughs> Jamie um I'm also uh, writing a, a feature another feature currently and I'm working on a couple of um 
couple of audio uh, projects and a couple of um, just because like I, I do a lot of voiceover work. So like there's, I have a lot of friends in, in that, in that world. And, and since audio stuff is, is in high demand these days, there's a, there's kind of a, a, a good, there's a, there's a, a, there's fertile ground there for, for, for interesting stuff to happen. So um, I'm, uh, I've got some things cooking in, in that, uh, in that space and uh, you know, but then just trying to do everything we can to, usher this uh this little child through the uh through 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 the the crazy wild west of virtual film festivals and um and you know and to, and to, and to see what happens great thank you all for joining tonight uh, thanks for the film uh, as, as i said it's one of my favorites um and thanks again thank you yeah thank you jim i, I uh, brian uh, was saying that you were you were uh, a big fan of the film and 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 it really means the world uh, to us so thanks for the support it's you know how difficult it is with these independent films especially uh now with the pandemic so uh, the support means the uh, it means the world so thank you and we know and we know how difficult it is what you guys have done in terms of uh turning this festival into a virtual event and uh it's really it's really been amazing and Thank you so much for this, and thank you so much for the honor of, uh, of, 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 this, of this award. We're really, really, really excited about it. Yeah, it, it's really something. It's really yeah. something. Very proud. Yeah, it means a lot to me. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Enjoy the rest of the fest. Thanks so much.